Hi, I'm Ted. Welcome to the place, the thing where we put the play back in Shakespeare. Today's video, I'm going to show you how I attack the beginning of Romeo and Juliet. Okay, I always begin my Shakespeare plays with uh, sort of the 15 minute play version. You can check out the um, video, I'll put a link in the, uh, below how I do that. Then I get into a series of wordplay uh, activities um, that I'll do. I also have a video for that one. I'll put the link there. Uh, after Samson and Gregory uh, finish their scene, though, uh, I get into some basic stage combat that I use um, to simulate the fight between, you know, when, when Tybalt comes in, we have Abram and Samson and Gregory, and it gets the whole class involved. It's very dynamic, and it leads into a discussion about, you know, what will drive the rest of the play. So there's a couple different ways I approach this. Um, I originally picked this up with Shakespeare and Company at a workshop. Uh, it was an incredible activity, although I have to say um, my students have struggled with it kind of the way that Kevin taught it to us in the workshop. Uh, he actually even went to sort of simulate people dying and it was, it was super intense and, and especially my ninth graders uh, over the years uh, have struggled um, you know, taking that activity seriously. So I modified a little bit. Um, it can still be serious, it's just it's not the level of intensity um, that I experienced you know, with that workshop. So. Um, I approach this a couple different ways. Sometimes if I've got kids that are pretty good about uh, focusing on what we're doing, I'll teach them you know, very scripted uh, stage combat moves. And I tend to do that most of the time. Uh, every once in a while, I will just sort of more of a free fall, hey, craft a fight scene, you know, be safe, here's some basic things you can do, and have them do that, and then work into the activity. Uh, today I'm gonna show you actually the choreography, the choreography that I use um, to teach this activity. So I begin it by saying, I know I want you to find at your feet uh, a five pound broadsword. And where it's gonna, you know, it's just air, it's imaginary, you know. And so this broadsword is heavy, you know, it's like the, you know, the size of a bag of potatoes about this big. And so pick it up, um, we're gonna have a good fighting stance and then I want you to hold this broadsword up in front of your body like this. And I have the whole class facing me and I, and I model it. And I'm gonna tell them, okay, broadswords are heavy. They're designed to cut through cartilage and sort of dismember, you know, limbs. They're, they're pretty serious weapons. And so uh, we wanna learn how to defend those sort of points. So this is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna step back here and we're gonna hold the sword at a uh, vertical angle and uh, we're gonna imagine that someone's gonna to try to cut off our left shoulder. We're gonna step back and slide that blade across our chest like this. And we're gonna step back and, divide, uh, and defend the other limb like that. All right, so let's everybody try that. And then again, everybody all together, ready? One, two, good. Then I say, because the sword is so heavy, we want to actually get big swinging motions and start sort of the opposite, or start in the original direction, come all the way in a big circle to sort of defend that. Um, so it's going to look a little bit like this. So we're going to defend left shoulder, right shoulder, all the way to the left leg, all the way around the right leg. Good. All right, let's try that again. Three, left shoulder, right shoulder, left knee, right knee. Then we're gonna imagine that someone's gonna to try to split us like a piece of wood. And so we need to turn sideways and we're gonna put that blade up overhead and kneel. You know, so it'll be look, so then we add that to the progression. Here we go. Left, right, left, right. Then, uh, after we're down in that kneeling position, um, we're gonna sort of throw that uh, attacker off us. So, left, right, left, right. And throw them off. Okay. And then we're going to add the final component where finally the person who's been defending is now going to uh, attack and, and kill the attacker. So left, right, left, right. We're going to imagine this is a baseball bat. They're going to come back at us. We're going to step side, step away, baseball swing. And we was talking about you can't actually swing right through the spinal column, so we're gonna actually sort of stop midway, and then we can be dramatic if we want. Person can jump up and down, we can pull the blade out, be as dramatic as we want at that point. So we practiced that a couple times, um, working on defense, and now we work on offense. And I always say again, because this blade is so heavy, you know, we can't just wield it around with one hand. Um, we're gonna actually create big circles and attack that way. 
part of it's, you know, I suppose, you know, broadswords are heavy if you ever picked them up. You used to use them in stage combat, and they're, they're pretty rugged. You get pretty tired afterwards. Um, but I also like the idea, especially working with, uh, with students who aren't actors and haven't been trained in stage combat, that coming around in a big circle just takes longer. It, it expands the time, which is good because you want the full experience. Uh, and also, it allows the person defending to sort of process. Where is this coming? Uh, oh, I'm coming to the shoulder, because they tend to get a little nervous, you know, trying to the competition. Oh, what are we doing? Um, and so that's helpful, I think. So this is where I teach the attacking. All right, we're going to go again, attacking, work into that to that to that left shoulder, um, or I'll start either one, start on either side. Uh, so we'll come around, attack this way, attack this way, attack down to the knee, attack down to the knee, back up, over the top, push it off, and then you'll come in, and of course the blade will come. Now you're being attacked. And and then collapse to the floor and die. So I, again, practice that a couple times with the whole class. All right, I'm going to attack you. You're going to all. I attack the entire class, and they defend. And then the other way. All right, your dream has come true. You all get to sort of attack me, and we play it that way. Then, after we've practiced that a couple times with me leading it, uh, send them off in pairs. Okay, go. Um, go practice, choreograph, you know, the stage combat and practice it. It's a great time to do if you can get outside at all, you know, especially if the weather gets nicer, you know, us in the Northeast uh, in May, you know, I'll get the kids outside so I have a big area of space. Um, um, today I'm lucky I can get in the theater. Um, sometimes I'll be in the cafeteria, but you need a kind of a big space and actually to be effective with this. So, so work on that. I have everybody go off on their own. And then come back and like, all right, let's see a couple. Hey, you guys, let's see your fight. No, okay, that's great. And let's see that fight. That's good. So then we practice. Then I tell them, okay, um, we're going to progress this activity. And I give them the, you know, the Shakespeare insult sheets. I'm sure everybody's seen them. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the in the comment in the in the comments below, so you can, uh, or in the description below, so you can download that. And I'll tell students that okay, you're going to be separated apart from your partner. You know, you're, everybody's going to be in a line. You're going to be facing your partner. Capulet's over here. Montague's over there. And the first, we're going to start by biting our thumb at each other. Everybody bite their thumbs. They bite their thumb. Then you're going to start insulting. So pick your insults off the sheet and start hurling insults off the the other side, feel free to add some thumb biting in there if you want. And then you'll hear a fight command, and then you should run together and begin the fight that you've choreographed. However, when the prince comes in, you have to do what the prince says. If you don't do what the prince says, you die. And so then, how do we know who the prince is? You'll know who the prince is. I will say sometimes if you get some classes that really kind of struggle with remembering that or oh maybe they get to it all worked up, I'll actually pull a couple kids aside ahead of time and say, okay, the prince is going to come in, I want you to kneel down. You know, it's like it's something really scary. And that will kind of help set that up and create the tone. So again, it is, all right, bite your thumb, yell insults, okay, fight. And I let it go and I try to come in before they actually get to the point where anybody dies. Um, and I come in as a prince, rebellious subjects, enemies to peace, profaners of the neighbor stained steel, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground and hear the sentence of your move it prince. And I go on with the whole speech. Um, and then, you know, we end. And I cut the speech a little bit. It doesn't have to be the whole speech. And you can read it if you want. I've done it so many times. I've got it mostly memorized now. So we run through the activity and then, you know, everybody sits in a circle and we debrief it. Okay, what was that like, you know? And, and you get some, uh, you know, classroom climate things. Well, that was, you know, that was cool. We got to be up on our feet and, you know, it was much more active and you get those types of things. Um, and ultimately you'll kind of get to, hopefully someone will say, well, I was mad because, uh, you know, I was, I was in this fight and the prince made me stop. And if the discussion goes long enough, usually you kind of get to that and you can lead the discussion, which is kind of the point you want to make. You know, in Romeo and Juliet, men, much of the conflict occurs because uh, the prince never really resolves the issues or the families never resolve the issues. So it just keeps going and perpetuating that violence. And, and that's kind of what we want to get to at the beginning of the play. But, so that's it. It's a, it's a phenomenal activity. You know, if you lead into the play with doing the 15 minute as a review and read the prologue, then you do the word play activity with the noodles for Samson and Gregory. Um, then you do the stage combat and move into sort of, you know, the, or the, or the biting of the thumbs and the insults and the stage combat. And finally the prince. Now, the beginning of the play, you know, the, the play's set up. Um, kids are excited about Shakespeare. They can't wait to come in the next day and find out what we're going to do. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. And please let me know how it goes in the comments. I'd uh, love to hear how people are, how are doing with Shakespeare. Uh, if this video's been helpful, please hit that like button. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't. And until the next time, I hope you're putting the play back in Shakespeare.